Hey guys, it's Carl. Welcome back to another iPhone vid. Of course, we've got the iPhone 13 Pros on deck. We just actually took a look at the iPhone 13s, the regular ones, if you want, I'll leave a link up this way, but happy iPhone season. I love kind of doing these unboxings. I wish we could be back in Cali in person at the Steve Jobs Theater, but uh, still happy to have them here in the studio. Anyways, this video is all around the 13 Pros. So I wanna show off some of the colorway options. I was mainly just gonna focus on the gold model for the 13 Pro. I know that everyone's kind of taken a look at the Sierra Blue one already, but uh, maybe we'll stick that off to the side. We'll quickly take a look at that after. You can see though, with the box, it's of course the same slim down box that we saw from the 12 line. We unfortunately don't get a charging brick inside. We'll kind of see what the full unboxing experience is like though. And that gold iPhone up top, and that has a bit of a different look than last year, I think. It's a bit more muted, very rich looking. We'll put that off to the side. And of course, underneath that, we've got designed by California in Apple. If we get 2000 likes, that is gonna be a t-shirt for sale one day. User manuals, warranty info, and unfortunately, no gold Apple stickers. All of the iPhones come with just the standard white one on now, actually more recyclable paper, so that's always nice. And just like all of the iPhones, again, we still are stuck with lightning, so we still get a lightning to USB-C cable. That is it. Quickly before we turn the phone on, this is a closer look at the gold colorway. So the nice thing that I love about the 13 Pros is that stainless steel band that runs around the outside. It gives it such a premium feel to it. And if you're someone like me who rocks their phones naked, it feels so nice to hold. And I know that's kind of a double-edged sword because you live on the edge, you get to feel the premium design, but you also run the risk of digging up your phone. And funny story, right before the 13s were announced, so maybe a week and a half ago, I dropped my 12 Pro Max right on the corner as I was getting out of my car. So you can see it shattered. I've got the spider webbing all around it. So if you don't get to upgrade every year, honestly, just grab a skin, grab a case for your device. My recommended one, always just go with the brand. They've got a ton of different skin options. They even have their new grip cases that you can get. And in terms of pricing, that's where these kind of slot in. So they're the same price as last year. So a thousand bucks for the lowest base storage option for the 13 Pro. And if you wanna to go to the larger 13 Pro Max, you're looking at 1100 bucks. And in terms of the overall physical design, there isn't really too much differentiating the 13 Pro from the 12 Pro, unlike the 12 to 13 that has a different camera orientation. We still have the trifecta on the back, but you'll actually notice if you look closely, the 13 Pro has bigger sensors. For example, the ultra wide camera, 47% larger. That's the one right off the bat I've noticed is instantly a lot sharper. That's also the one that you can shoot macro photography in. So of course, full testing will take place, but uh, it isn't the same sensor. A lot of you will just look at the megapixel count, 12 megapixels, it's the same, but you can clearly see from the size, we've got much larger lenses and of course, much larger glass to look at. On the 13 Pro models, I don't think these are slightly thicker over on the iPhone 13 to 12s. It's a quarter mil larger, but I don't really see too much of a difference. And maybe that's just my eyes deceiving on me because I know the 13 Pros do have a larger battery. And I think that's the biggest difference that a lot of people don't talk about. The battery life is now one and a half hours larger on say the 13 Pro. And I believe, don't quote me on this, two, two and a half hours on the 13 Pro Max. So of course, full testing will take place, but just that little standard upgrade to the battery, I think that's such a big difference. I'm happy to have a slightly thicker phone to have a battery that lasts me hours longer. As an example, my 12 Pro Max, which Apple claimed this had the best battery life last year. I've used this 365 days since the last iPhone launch. It does not last me till the end of the day. As an example, 338, it is right under 50%, and I will use this a ton more in the afternoon. And I generally have to juice this up around 7, 8 p.m. if I want this to last till midnight. So that's one of the downfalls of iPhones I find, and I'm really happy that battery life is something that they improved this year. Physically, you might also see that notch. That has now gotten slimmer, it isn't small, by any means, you still see a considerable amount blocked off. Apple has also not put any useful info there. So a smaller notch size, it's nice to have, but uh, it isn't a big reason to upgrade. 
I guess the big thing coming to the 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max is the display. So it's the same size, but we now have ProMotion. We now finally have 120 Hertz on the Pro models. And I know that's hard to pick up on camera because we're shooting at 30 frames. You'll just have to take my word for it. It is so much quicker. It's just like the iPad Pro, except it's better because this is an OLED panel. And I can assume I'm already road mapping my projections here. I can almost guarantee you, we will see that ProMotion at 120 Hertz come to next year's iPhone 14, almost guaranteed. So in terms of an upgrade, it's actually a bit more enticing to upgrade to the 13 Pro, in my opinion. If you already have, say, the iPhone 12 to upgrade to the 13, there isn't as big of a difference. But if you're a true techie, if you're someone that wants a Pro phone, you'd expect a Pro device to have 120 hertz. That's kind of a no-brainer. So if you had, say, the 12 Pro to the 13 Pro, that's a tough one, but if you're coming from any device, you know, older than that, the 13 Pro would be something I would eye. Of course, internally, we now have the A15 Bionic. I'll leave a benchmark score. That's actually the same chip found across the entire iPhone 13 line. So of course, it's gonna be the best chip that Apple makes. They wouldn't give you a chip that was worse than last year. Is it a big, big increase in performance? I haven't noticed anything in my initial testing. The one new feature that really relies on that hardware is their new cinematic mode for video. So of course I said, all camera testing will take place over the next couple days. So if you want me to shoot anything, let me know down below in the comments and I will make that happen. I will quickly, I've just decided in this video to take a look at the Sierra Blue. It wouldn't be any use to create two separate videos. I'll actually say the Sierra Blue is way less muted than what I initially thought from watching the keynote. I thought it would be a lot more saturated. I thought it would be a lot more baby blue, but it is totally not. It's got that lovely matte blue finish. Of course, that stainless steel banding around the outsides. And because I have this in the Pro Max model, I just love the larger devices. So this will probably be my new daily replacing my 12 Pro Max. So yeah, that has pretty much been the iPhone 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max. These are very minor incremental upgrades. The design is very similar. The screen size is similar, at least on the 13 Pros, we do have 120 Hertz. The screens are brighter. And if you want any other questions for the full review, leave them down below in the comments. I will make that happen. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you check out the rest of my Apple coverage and I will catch you hopefully in one of those next vids. Peace.